Good day, Slasher fans. I am Steve Goltz, along with Kevin Summerfield, and we are Slasher Studios. And we're going to be doing a commentary tonight on the one and only Kevin Fever. I'm really, really excited about this. I've been a fan of this film since the first time I watched it. And uh, it's been a while since um, since a viewing, so I'm, I'm stoked to watch it. Yeah, it's actually been a few years since I've seen this as well. Uh, it came out, I believe, in 2003. This is one of the first movies that I watched when I moved here to Appleton at the theater. I was able to see it three times at the big screen, so excited to watch it again. Uh, just kind of a note, if you guys are watching this with us, we are watching it on Blu-ray, so it is the director's cut. There's a couple of additional scenes. I think it's only a couple minutes difference. So if you are watching it on DVD, we'll try to kind of point out here and there what's different in the director's cut. But for the most part, you guys should be able to follow along. Um, yeah. So we hope you guys have fun with this commentary. This is, yeah, like I said, one of my favorite horror comedies of the last few years. So if you guys are watching the movie along with us, uh, get ready and hit the play button now. All right. Yeah, I still remember the first time watching this. Um, Kevin, you actually introduced me to the film. And this, I mean... There's a certain number of films that you watch where you're watching it and then not even before it's done, maybe halfway through a quarter into it, you're you're already sucked in and you already know you're going to love the film. And Cabin Fever was one of those for me. Yeah, it was kind of like that for me too. Um, I'm going to kind of start with a story. The first time I saw this, I saw this opening night at the theater. Uh, my good buddy from Madison actually drove up to watch it with me. Um and yeah, we didn't really know what to expect. We'd each seen, I think, one trailer for it. I just knew that it had gotten a lot of buzz. A lot of people were talking about it. It got some great reviews. I believe it was a Sundance pickup. It, 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 was, it was a film festival pickup, though, by Lionsgate. I believe they paid uh, a million and a half to buy mm. the rights for the film. At, yeah, I, I think it was Sunday, Sunday Sundance. It was either that or maybe Telluride. Uh, not 100% sure. But yeah, it was a million and a half. And they released it in September of 2003. And when it was released, it was actually their highest grossing film up to that date. It made $21 million at the box office. Uh, pretty, pretty good. Thirty, uh, Steve says thirty million. Thirty million was the worldwide gross. Made twenty one million in the United States. Uh, so yeah, it was a pretty big um, financial success for Lionsgate. But it's kind of just crazy to think that ten years from now, uh, their highest grossing film would be Hunger Games, which mm. was they went from a twenty million dollar movie to a movie that made four hundred and ten million dollars in the United States. Yeah, that's alone. crazy. So that kind of shows you just how far. Lionsgate has come. They kind of wore this horror studio making films like Kevin Fever, the Saw franchise, mm. Hostel, all of these kind of movies. And they kind of went from that. And now they're doing kind of more mainstream. Not so much horror anymore. But yeah, so uh, yeah, Kevin, it, Fe oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, as far as I know, the I think the budget was like one and a half. So they ended up just, I guess, breaking even on what they pulled in well i'm sure that if the budget was probably one and a half they probably <laughs> sold it for one and a half and then they also got certain um percentage points so I, i'm sure that they probably just broke even and then they probably made some of the back end mm -hmm. yeah i mean the the credits here they're you know the very simple but also it still gives you kind of that kind of almost skin crawling just uh yucky creepy kind of mm -hmm. feel i mean it's got the music and then just um going from kind of the white white backdrop to the brown to the red and uh just kind of all adds up and effective as far as i i can tell yeah definitely and this is anamorphic widescreen it's the 2.35 which this movie really does give kind of that that wide scope of the the woods and you got the weird hermit homeless guy <laughs> with the the dead animal. Uh, so so my talk a little bit about my first experience seeing this in the theater. Like I said, I saw it opening night. 
it was a packed theater, and I mean packed. There was maybe 20 seats open, which I just thought was crazy uh, for this movie that I personally had not heard of that much, and I consider myself a horror fan. Um, I would say that 75% of the audience was 18 or under the age of 18, and they were horrified by this movie, and not horrified in a good way. Um, I think that there was a lot of couples on dates, like 16, 17 year olds. It's like, oh, I'm going to take my girlfriend to see this good, scary movie. I don't think that they realized that. They didn't like it? They didn't like the gore. Oh, they, I think they thought that it was going to be kind of a jump scare movie. Uh, they didn't like the politically incorrect humor. Uh, yeah, they were. Really? Yeah, the scene that's coming up in a bit with the shopkeeper. Um, with the line that he says, um, which is very politically incorrect, I will say that me and my friend that I saw it with Jim in the theater, we were the only two people in the theater. Like, there were gasps, and we were the only two that laughed. Hmm. And, like, literally, you could see everyone in the theater just kind of look at us, like, just ashamed that we thought that this was funny. Hmm. Yeah, I was uh, I was actually curious what you're gonna say about your theater experience because I unfortunately never saw it in the theater. I just you know obviously saw it on DVD when it came out and then um, got the Blu-ray. Um, but yeah, I guess my first experience, like I kind of touched on earlier, um, just it grabbed me from the beginning and I got sucked in, like I said. And it's just one of those where you knew um, just a little bit into the film that you're gonna love it, and it's one that you're gonna kind of cherish in your collection, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to think that this movie came out 11 years ago. Um, I can vividly remember seeing this in the theater. Like, I, I I, can literally, like, remember the screen. I can remember where we sat. Like, it was it was one of those movies. It came out a week before my birthday, and my parents actually came in town to celebrate my birthday the next week, and I took them to see this. Hmm. So the song that you guys are hearing in the background, um, you guys might remember... Uh, it from Last House on the Left, which was this kind of little little homage. We actually just recently watched Last House on the Left. Um, if there, is there one of these kind of college age kids that reminds you most of you? Hmm. Um, I guess I could, I or would you just be Dennis? <laughs> I don't want to be Dennis. Dennis would be the last person I'd want to be. You're always biting. Have people. you ever bit anybody? Um, not that didn't want me to bite them. <laughs> It was at least asked or implied. Did you make pancakes in the morning, at least? Um, does Pop-Tarts count? No, that does not. That's terrible. And they're pro and knowing you, they'd be unfrosted, which is just yeah, the worst of the worst. they're unfrosted, and then you put jelly no, on top of them. That is, who they're does stra that? strawberry un unfrosted <laughs> Pop-Tarts, and then you take them out of the... The toaster, oh. and then you put strawberry jelly on top of it. It's actually really good. I don't it's know got the jelly that. and the jelly. Doesn't that sound like something that you try? The, at least if it had the jelly on top that was unfrosted. If it had the jelly, I would try it, but I'd still like frosting. So writer's strong. I mean, it's funny. We were actually just talking about Boy Meets World for a different character, um, just a little bit, little bit before the show. Kevin and I did, and uh, now we have. Writer Strong from his Boy Meets World fame, and uh, he kind of he does a really good job in this in this role. I mean, he kind of comes out into his own, and I mean, it's kind of been a while since probably anybody has seen him in anything else, so it's kind of cool to see him in Cabin Fever, and we actually get him back for the second. Yeah, we do get him back for a cameo in the second. Uh, later on in here, we'll talk about the sequels two and three. They're currently making part four. Uh, so you've seen two. I've seen both two and three. Um, I actually kind of like them all for their own reasons, but I'll, I'll get on to that later. Uh, so some trivia behind this. Um, Peter Jackson stopped production on Lord of the Rings Return <laughs> of the King three times to screen this movie for the entire crew. Jackson was so enthusiastic about the film, he gave director Eli Roth publicity calls. Hmm. So before uh, Cabin Fever, what did you know about Mr. Eli Roth? Anything? Much? Uh, just that he was kind of this film festival sensation. Um, it was kind of like he was, he kind of 
brought in with him this new era of filmmaking and there's people that love this new era and there's people that hate this new era um you included in this era you could include um james wan who did saw and he did dead silence and uh, the conjuring you could also include um probably uh eli roth's probably best cohort would be ty west who directed House of the Devil, the recent movie, which you guys haven't seen it, I highly, highly recommend watching um, The Sacraments. And he actually also directed Cabin Fever 2, even though he's now disowned it. Hmm. So this is the uh, the scene you were talking about earlier, Kevin. Did you think this was funny? <laughs> I didn't have a problem with it. I guess I'm not really offended by much. I don't know if that's good or bad, but... Yeah, did were a lot of so at the end. Um, if you're kind of listening to this, you've probably seen Cabin Fever before, I would think and hope. Um, but at the end, there's a little kind of uh, funny little snippet from the uh, the old man in the in the uh, this little county store, and uh, he has a line. Did a lot of people stay and check out this last line, or did you even stay? Did you even know about it? I did not know about it. Oh, okay. So, okay, I was wrong. It was this screen at the 2002 Toronto International Film Festival. Out of the 347 films screened that weekend, Cabin Fever screened last and became the highest selling movie at the festival. All nine studios engaged in a bidding war. Um, had th Those nine studios had passed on the movie during the script stage. Um, and it's funny because the one exception that didn't pass on it, Lionsgate, wasn't in existence when they made the script. So they were the ones who ended up getting it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's always cool. I mean, the, the, that's kind of one of the cool things about going to festivals and, and uh, conventions is just, you know, being able to see films. Oh, so this people. one right here, too, you guys might remember from Last House and Left. See films and meet people that, you know, you never know what they're going to be in the future. So, I mean, wouldn't they have been awesome to be able to see this at Toronto Film Fest? Yeah, actually, I think that <laughs> would be. Like, just to see kind of this this new wave, especially in 2003. I mean, 2003 was a huge year for horror. Um, it's probably since 2000. It was probably my favorite year. We got this movie. We got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, which I actually really enjoyed. We got Freddy vs. Jason. We got my favorite of the Final Destinations. We got Final Destination 2. We also got Wrong Turn. And we also got um, May as well as Willard. So that was that's a big horror year. There's some great movies in there. Not all of them are great. But uh, I saw every single one of them in the theater. Except for May. May didn't open where I lived. But hmm. all of the other ones I saw opening weekend. And even Freddy vs. Jason. I saw that two times opening weekend. Mm -hmm. So our uh, our good looking cast has now arrived to the cabin, and as I've said many times before, I love, love, love the kind of cabin atmosphere out in the woods. Who knows? Maybe that's just uh, the Midwest boy in me, but I always, always just love these kind of sceneries and uh, the cabin, cabin feel. So what what was the kind of like the one scene in this movie that when you were watching it for the first time that you said to yourself like wait this this isn't like just a regular horror movie like there, <laughs> there's something different about this one this right here where he's looking through the binoculars is that it <laughs> it's it's coming up and it's the scene um. <laughs> The, the sex scene when he's like, okay, now do me. And then she starts fingering his butt. Um, I can't, uh, man, like, it was just, there, there was, there were, there were a lot of teens in the theater that I saw this in that I don't even think 100% knew mm -hmm. what was happening mm -hmm. to him at the time. So you never said ask that to a girl? I, I, I haven't. You haven't flipped over and said, okay, now do me. If it was with her, I might. Either one? Yeah. 
So one of the trivia things on IMDb that I think is actually kind of interesting and something that I guess I never really thought of till now is that so all of the characters except possibly except for one it's it's debatable on the one but um all of them um contract the the virus none of them actually die from it hmm. and when you think about it and how each of them die it's always an outside source so did you ever um go to a cabin in the woods and shoot some squirrels <laughs> um I've never shot a squirrel. I shot a chipmunk. Did you kill it? Yeah. yeah were you saying? <laughs> Alvin? Uh, maybe Theodore. It was pretty chunky. Did you cry? I didn't cry, no. So here's the Very sex nice scene. Nice sex scene here. So I don't think we were supposed to see that. According to IMDb, she had a no nudity clause. Well, we're seeing some boobies here, so. Maybe she just liked the final cut so much that she said, yeah, just keep it in. Hey, I, I like it myself. What about the finger in the butt? <laughs> um, I don't know. You like these hairy armpits? Well, I can't say that it does much for me or the kind of <laughs> the little swipe of hair in the middle of the chest. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Cabin Fever, when it came out, it, it got, for the most part, very positive reviews it did get a couple of very very negative reviews including um ebert and roper both gave it two thumbs down they said it was kind of vile and reprehensible uh yeah there were some mixed reviews like entertainment weekly i think gave it like a c plus and they said that you know it was kind of funny in parts but you know the comedy really didn't mix with the horror which i actually completely disagree with mm -hmm. i think this movie has some of the best kind of um character actors that i've seen in a horror movie in a long long time and what i love most about this movie is that there'll be one really good character and that character won't be in it anymore and they'll be like oh well i i really miss that character and then they'll they'll bring in another one that's even better than the one before <laughs> that and i mean i wish that i know that he's kind of hit or miss but i love winston who's going to come up and he's my favorite character of this franchise and he's in part one, he's in part two. <laughs> Winston's uh, hilarious. He's not in the third one. The third one's <laughs> oh, a prequel, man. which the third one just kind of takes a completely different approach. It's um, Patient Zero, where you find out the first person that got infected, blah, 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 blah. It's on this island. Um, it takes it very, very, very seriously. There's a girl who gets, um, spoiler alert, there's a girl who gets um, whipped in the face with a big black dildo to Ooh. death. Is that happened to you? That's never was happened that, Was to this me. based on you? No. None of that happened. I bet this is based on you, just laying a fire in the middle <laughs> of the lawn. Uh, no, that's never happened to me, but that's kind of the only kind of moment that movie really comes alive because the rest of the movie is just so serious and so depressing. And, um, so yeah, to uh, talk about the sequel a little bit, Cabin Fever 2. Uh, yeah, so Cabin Fever 2, it, it was stuck in post-production hell for many years. In fact, it was in post-production so long that while he was waiting to go back to the film, Ty West actually made another film, which is House of the Devil, and that movie was even released before Cabin Fever was even completed. Uh, Cabin Fever 2, uh, according to internet sources, um, the movie was taken away from Ty West. They didn't like the direction it was going. They reshot the ending, reshot many of the scenes, and just... It, Tore it apart, huh? Yeah, it's a very, it's a very kind of mean-spirited film, much more so than the original. And yeah, I don't think that people... Uh, appreciated or liked it too much but yeah so going back to this one uh yeah i mean i i've talked to horror fans or there's not a lot that say that they love this i mean that say that they you know sort of like this movie it's very love it or hate it and i understand the people that hate it because they think that it's just obnoxious and it's a very particular type of humor hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, to me, the the horror and the humor and just everything just kind of meshes pretty evenly for myself. Maybe that's just says something about my kind of uh, humor that I have, my personality. But um, yeah, I mean, just the lines, some of just the facial expressions, mm-hmm. just that kind of stuff. It all it all works for me. Yeah, I mean, I think this movie is absolutely hilarious. I love the cinematography. I like the look mm-hmm. of the characters. It's just, it all works. There's some great um, practical gore effects. So, yeah, it took two years after this movie to come out, after this movie came out, for Eli Roth to release his follow-up film, which I was eagerly anticipating. I would say The Cabin Fever is probably one of my top ten horror movies of all time. And then he released Hostel, which I don't think I've been more disappointed by a follow-up film by a horror director. I don't think that Hostel had any of the humor that this had. Mm -hmm. I think it it had a very uh, mean-spirited approach. It seemed to be very misogynistic. It seemed to really hate women. It's, I mean, the first hour of that film is just brass, 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 brass. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) <laughs> but where is the humor of this? It just wasn't fun. Sure. Like, you know, I would rather rather watch Cabin Fever a hundred times in a row than watch Hostel. And I, I actually, I, I, I actually like Hostel too a lot better because I think that he corrects a lot of the mistakes that he made in the first one. I think the characters are much more likable. So this, the bowling scene. I've always loved this. Didn't she do a reenactment of this for a acting class? Um, I did. How did that go? Were you him? Were you the bowler? <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think. What the how the No, I was I was Paul. I wish that you could have been the bowler guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then you could have bashed the back of the skulls in of all of the the, the people in your acting class. Hmm. That could have worked too. But uh, no, yeah, we did. A, I had to do basically a monologue, and I, and I picked this from Kevin Fever, and I was Paul, and I was telling the story, and um, yeah, I don't. I think I was the only one who had kind of like this weird, creepy um, did, story. Did Everybody people... else was more of like, oh, I'm gonna do Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> it's like I'm gonna get out of this prison. <laughs> yeah. like, really serious? <laughs> yes, it's pretentious. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I actually had to do a monologue for an acting class too, and um, I also did a horror movie. I actually did the the end, which is another commentary we did. I actually did the end with Billy and Sue because it was a it was oh. a partner monologue. So we did the Billy and Sue stuff. Uh, hmm. There's Eli Roth as a little cameo, but yeah, I did stuff with Billy and Sue from Scream. So, so did did anyone in your acting class actually know what this was from? Like, did you have to introduce yourself and say? Hi, my name's Steve Gold. I'll be doing a piece from Kevin Fever. Yep, exactly. And um, other than one girl, the famous Nikita, who is actually in our short film Teddy, um, she was the only one who a knew what this film was and b loved Eli Roth. So yeah, she actually got to work with him a little bit. She was an extra on Piranha. That's right. Yeah. So um, she's actually in in L.A. Um, becoming. Very successful and famous, hopefully. So props to props to Nikita and the best of luck. So yeah, I, I saw that she's been showing up on some episodes of Teen Wolf. She oh, I didn't know she's on Teen Wolf. I know yeah. she was, she was on Glee and a couple other episodes of uh, some uh, some hit network shows. So that that's awesome. That's good so here me. we get Eli Roth again. We discovered her. <laughs> what I love most about this is I don't know how many people out there have seen it, but. Um, so, if you guys have watched the movie 2001 Maniacs, he plays the same character in that movie, and that's actually a prequel to this movie, because he's still got the dog, he's doing okay, mm-hmm. he actually wants a ride from the kids to go here, hmm. which I think is just absolutely hilarious. Um, that's another really, um, I would say if you guys are listening <laughs> and you really like Kevin Fever and kind of the the politically incorrect uh, humor, I Definitely, definitely recommend 2001 Maniacs. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of funny because Eli Roth, you know, director, also pulls off two different character roles in this, too. 
Yeah, he does. He plays kind of the... Uh, I heard that the, that the original actor to play Grimm, whatever the reason he fell through, or he wasn't able to do it, or he got oh, sick, really? something that... And he was like a last minute, because he just knew the script, so... Nice. That, that's, that's at well, least he a... He pulls it off, good. He does. I mean, I don't know if that's true. I mean, you can only believe so much of what you read on IMDb and Wikipedia, but that's at least the internet rumor. I wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I, I can't imagine. You'd have to be kind of egocentric to say, like, Oh, th- this movie that I wrote and directed, I'm going to have two parts for me. <laughs> so, I mean, granted, the other one was just kind of a two second cameo, but um, yeah, I guess I could see that. Hmm. I-, I couldn't see anyone else playing the role better. Oh, no, no. And the, um, the little fun fact about 2001 Maniacs, I remember the first time I saw that too. I, I watched it with you, and I don't think you told me what was coming up. And then that scene came up, and I was like, oh my God, that- that's perfect. That is just great. Yeah, because I love it because he's the side of the road and he just <laughs> he just throws the dead animal in front of him. He's like, "Oh, you hit my whatever!" <laughs> like he's like, "You gonna give me a ride?" What was it, armadillo? I think it wasn't armadillo. It just goes splat on there. <laughs> That's another one we'll have to watch again. I I really enjoy. Yeah, that movie's got Lynn Shay and Robert England. It's just it's it's a lot of fun. What was that quote about like the girl like boobs and? Like, the kid's like, yeah, mom, you want to drink some milk? Yeah, because she's like the milkmaid. <laughs> like, yeah, well, we got to watch it's that like, again. Yeah, I forgot what it was. Do you play the guitar? I don't. I never have. I think it'd be cool if I could. What instruments do you play? Um, I, I play zero instruments. Nothing? Nothing. I can whistle. What about the flute? No, I've never played the flute. Kevin, are you fluent with the flute? I thought that you would have played the flute because you probably learned that, like, you're probably like, oh, I'm going to play the flute, and I was learning from Super Mario Brothers 3 that it's going to help <laughs> me get closer to finding a girlfriend. <laughs> no, never have. Um, <laughs> I played the clarinet for one year. I think it was sixth, sixth grade. Hmm. I quit right away. So what do you think of Bert? Because he's one person who I think probably has a lot to do with if people like this movie or not. I mean, he's kind of a love it or hate it guy. I enjoyed him. I think I thought he was funny. He kind of reminded me a little bit of uh, Mike Goltz in every one of our I movies. I could see that. I could definitely see that. Um, yeah, I don't mind him at all. I actually even kind of um, uh, well, I can, I'm spacing on his name. I'm going to have to look it up right now. But James? James, James D. No, the the asshole guy, the asshole kind of preppy guy that got his butt fingered. Joey Kern, Jeff? Jeff, yeah, Jeff. Um, he's kind of one of them that I think that people really think that he's an asshole. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, he kind of gets killed for being an asshole. He gets shot to death. And he says, you know, hey, like, I made it. Like, you're not going to get me, blah, blah, blah. But um, he kind of just leaves his friends to die, mm-hmm. which I think that it, Steve, if you were one of the characters, you'd probably be him. Yeah, you got the hot girlfriend, just uh... finger in your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, th- I think talking about the characters, that's kind of a good a good subject because there's so many films where they have just characters you don't care about or you, you, you hate them. And you, mm-hmm. you just don't even want to watch them on screen anymore. And for me, with these people, I kind of grew to want to know them and to to like to see him on screen and I didn't have a problem with any of them. Um, yeah, they feel like real friends. They have a good chemistry. Mm-hmm. I mean, they don't always get along, but you can kind of feel as this, as they kind of start to um, fall apart as a group. What would you do if a guy tried to steal your car and just started spewing <laughs> all over this your car? Well, I've never had a guy spew in my car before. But uh, it wouldn't be good. Yeah, once again, um, this is a fantastic score. Actually, mm-hmm. I have the score. It's really good. Um, really kind of creepy. Um, it's a little ominous, but at the same time, it's very slightly campy. Like, it, it's, it's serious, but at the same time, like, there's almost a little bit of this kind of playful vibe to it. Mm-hmm. 
effects wise that's when we can touch on definitely in this film i mean makeup effects as far as the blood and all that stuff um as we just saw when the uh, the guy came up to the door um he had the face makeup on that looked really cool and just the the fact that they were able to to um i guess do that fire stunt in the middle of the mm -hmm. woods i'd be i'd be probably terrified you know working on a film and having somebody not only be on fire but running through um, a dry forest in fall yeah, I mean, <laughs> can you imagine that? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I mean, being that low budget, yeah. I can't even imagine. I mean, this would just. Do you ever do that with honey? Put it between your fingers. No, I like. I do like a. Have you ever done that with other sticky stuff? A good bear of honey. <laughs> no, I'm not a fan of sticky stuff in my fingers. You're a you're a bigger fan of. The do sticky. you have the um. The. Uh, why the, can't it? The, the sleep mask? No, I did get one on a plane once. I'm not sure if I still have it. You don't wear that to help you sleep? <laughs> I don't. I've actually been curious to see if that actually helps you sleep. Like, it's something that I would try. I don't think that I would actually go out and buy one, but I'd try it. He's got a nice ma mask on one, too. It's black. <laughs> I think most of them are black. I don't know, it would just be bugging me. I don't want something strapped to my head when I'm trying to sleep. Do you ever sleep with earplugs? Earplugs? Yeah, have you ever put in earplugs to help you sleep? No. I could use earplugs this morning because I was woken at like 7.30 in the morning because the neighbor was <laughs> mowing their lawn. 7.30 in the morning? Yeah, I was, oh I was pissed. God. And then, so they, they got done at about nine, and then I'm like, oh, thank God. And then they start cutting down this tree. <laughs> and I, like, doing? literally, they were still working on it at three o'clock. Jeez. Yeah, that, re that reminds me when I used to live at the apartment that I was in in Scottsdale. Um, every, the trailer park? No, it was not a trailer park. It, <laughs> it was, was like a nice, trailer park. No, it was a nice apartment in Scottsdale. The trailer, the trashy one was in Phoenix. The nice one was in Scottsdale. And there... The one where you live next to the witch? The witch. That's the nice one? The witch? The, you said there was like a witch that lived up above you that put like curses on the people that would like walk by? What are you talking about? Yeah, like I remember like walking back and you're like, oh, do you see the lady who lives up there? Like she's kind of a witch. Like she's really weird. And like she's like looking between her blinds. You don't remember that at all? Like some weird old lady that lived like above you. Because that sounded all familiar. I don't think. And you said that people like, you're like, oh, like she'd always be like looking at her blinds, like going out on like the little patio and just like looking at people. It might not have been me. No, it was you. <laughs> you I don't know. Just, you're just, that doesn't sound at all familiar. <laughs> I can still remember because it was, it wasn't like the one right above you. It was like the one above you to the left. That there's a yeah. Weird... Okay, I know exactly what you're talking about now. Yeah, <laughs> there's a weird old lady yeah, who said she's she was a witch. weird, and uh, yeah, I think she was a witch. She was casting spells. <laughs> yeah, she creating curses. She would, she would talk to herself. She tried and to then... X me a couple times. Yeah. See, how did you not remember that right <laughs> away? Well, there's so many how weird. Many... There's so many weird people you're, down there. You just said, oh, the. The place I lived at, they were so nice. They lived next to a witch. <laughs> That's, that was the nicer one of the two. What was that the other was one I nice. had? That was that was in the, a rough side of town in Phoenix. But the Scottsdale one, go, piggybacking off your landscaping um, story, every Wednesday, every single Wednesday, they would have the um, – the leaf blower crew come through yeah. and pretty much the break of dawn, and they they were working um, for a couple hours just leaf blowing right next to the windows. Do you remember that one apartment <laughs> complex, the quote nice one that you lived in, uh, when uh, yeah you were trying to get a TV from somebody, they had like a flyer up. I do, Keep and they're like. They said on the flyer, they're like, oh, like $50 <laughs> yeah. for, and you're like, call them. I'm going to put $40 in my pocket and just tell them $40 is all I have for this like 52 inch TV because they wanted all their stuff gone because for some reason they were getting evicted or something. I remember that. Yes. We never ended up going. I don't know why. Did we call and they didn't have it? 
I think we called and there was no answer. Okay. Or we left, we left a message or something. Yeah, you're like, Tom, I only have $40. <laughs> I, I remember that, yeah. We ended up, that might have been the night we ended up getting pizza and watching Poltergeist 3. Poltergeist 3 is a different night. Is that a different night? Or was this the night I ended up waking up on the floor? That was a different time. <laughs> that was a t- we got a cool character here. This is a character I would like to. <laughs> we have we have a good like we have a partner upcoming slasher dismembering Christmas that this lady could definitely play. Oh yeah. Um. How mad would you get be if you got served a bunch of rotten meat? I don't want no rotten meat. I <laughs> like some all, prime beef. It's all bad. It's all got to go back. That doesn't look good. Whatever that is hanging out. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, I, I always love the part where she just doesn't even give a crap about what getting blood on her. She's like touching herself with her with her bloody glove hand. And I, well, for whatever reason, I always think of that. I'm like, I would never touch myself with a bloody glove. <laughs> She's got a radio. Well, that's good. So yeah, one thing that I, I am kind of pissed off that I want to say shame on Lionsgate yeah. is that so I bought this on Blu-ray. So I got I had the the DVD, which is kind of the the hologram art. Yep, got original. that one. But do you still have it on DVD? I do. Don't get rid of your DVD. I'm <laughs> so mad that I did. The DVD had like five commentaries and had all of this extra stuff. Um I don't know if it was for the director's cut or they wanted, you know, more space to be put on to the um onto the picture transfer, but they, they cut, I think, four of the five commentaries, and they also cut a lot of the extras. Hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's always too bad, especially, you know, who knows, when they go to Blu-ray or when they do, you know, maybe like a set of a franchise and you lose all these extras and commentaries or you're hoping that they're going to actually have some extras and commentaries and nothing comes out. That's yeah. always kind of a bummer. It makes me mad. It's ba- especially like when it's a packed DVD and then they release it on mm. Blu-ray and they're the, the Blu-ray's bare bones and then you have to say to yourself, well, do I want to spend another $15 in this movie when I'm getting zero extra? <laughs> and then you have to keep the DVD in order to keep the extras. It's, it's a pain in the ass. So, I mean, I guess we should at least be happy that Lionsgate kept <clears throat> some of the extras, but it's too bad. I also don't like it either, the fact that, um, I mean, I don't mind the director's cut. I don't I don't know if the scenes really add anything in particular, but um, I don't like it when they release a version and they don't give you the option between the two um, because I do think that I marginally like the, the theatrical cut better. Those are some good-looking flares. Remember those? Uh, yeah. I miss flares. I think we got... Um... I think we had Nikita wear flares in, in her short film, Teddy. I think you're right. Do you have a lot of flares? I didn't, but I've always loved this So here shot, we get right? the yeah, action. This is some good this cinematography. Is our, this is kind of the, the homage to uh, the, pro, the most, probably famous, most famous shot of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So really random aside, I'm sure for the original, which is actually kind of the butt shot um, for... I spit on your grave. That that cover, mm-hmm. you know, what's wrong coming with yeah. the underwear. That's modeled after the Memoir. I just found that out today. Really? Like sh- like sh- that that was the body for that. It was not the actress in the movie. Hmm. Did that scare you? I think you jumped the first time we watched this. No. You were pretty scared. I was not scared of this movie. I was loving this movie. I think you did jump at that part, though. (laughs) I'd take some beef jerky. I would. 
It looks like it's peppered, too. That's the best kind. The teriyaki. Jack no. Link's. The pepper, then original, then teriyaki. Sweet and spicy would be just under um, <laughs> peppered. Which one's your favorite, teriyaki? Um, I like teriyaki. I like them all. I, you can't go wrong with uh, with beef jerky. Here he is! Our favorite cop. We have some good lines, and good lines in the second one, too. That sushimi one. <laughs> good line. I think about that every other week, I think. <laughs> no I cannot smell. <laughs> Is that your favorite? <laughs> That's the best kind. Don't you want some smell though? <laughs> uh, I'd rather have no smell than a bad smell. What? But there's that tuna smell. <laughs> is that tuna smell? The tuna. <clears throat> I guess some fresh tuna. Maybe some albacore. Some roast beef, perhaps. <laughs> cow box of cow tongues. It's all gross. <laughs> a high school play curtain. <laughs> Is that your favorite? <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to know the story. Do you know if he did anything before this film? Did Eli Roth find him? What's the story behind this, this um, cop? Let's look him up. I'm looking on IMDb right now. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he's very interesting. I mean, you could definitely tell that he's very much a character actor. I would not be surprised if most of this is improvised. Is improvised probably I would I actually wouldn't be surprised if all of it was improvised. It just seems like he's kind of living in his own world. Um but it's funny, he's also in 2001 Maniacs. He's one of the oh, the hillbillies. Gosh. Um but no, he did yeah, he did he's, a He's done quite of, a few. American Big. History X, um Independence Day, <laughs> Pleasantville. Hmm. I don't remember him in any of that. Never been kissed. Oh my god, he was the boy in Independence Day. Was he was the little boy? Troy. God, it's been too long since I've seen that. He's from Key Largo, Florida. That's pretty cool. He did thirteen episodes of Two Guys, a Girl, and a Pizza Place. I remember that before they changed the name to Two Guys and a Girl. Yeah. When they lost the pizza place with um, Ryan Reynolds, Giuseppe, Giuseppe, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think that this movie is very underrated. I think that Kevin Fever Two is underrated. I think they're both kind of very, very acquired tastes. Um, I probably need to see Kevin Fever 3 again before kind of giving it an official review. I'd say that I, I kind of liked it. Um, I give the original 4 out of 4. I gave the sequel 3 out of 4. And then I gave the the third one um, 2.5 out of 4. I think that I think that the sequel is actually so good that I'd probably give it 3.5 if it didn't kind of fall apart at the end. I really don't like the stuff with the stripper with kind of the sores on her chest. It just feels like something from another movie. I just, I don't like it. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think that the Thai West does have kind of a gift for kind of this, this dark humor as does Eli Ross. So I, I would like to see them kind of jump into it again because um, Eli Ross new movie, um, Green Inferno looks deadly serious as does, I well, I know the Ty West new movie, The Sacrament. It's uh, don't go into that movie expecting any comedy whatsoever. It's um, very, very, very serious to the point where it's kind of like you're just you're you're thinking about it all day because it's just depressed you that much. Hmm. So we've actually been watching a lot of movies with cops and some kind of famous cops. I mean, we had Dewey. For the past couple of weeks with Scream, and we had uh, Deputy Winston Olsen here now. I mean, so, not to cut you off, but the kind of cuts there, that wasn't in the theatrical version, was it? I do not remember showing her face all bloody with the teeth before it actually happens. I do not either, no. 
So yeah, you, no, not at all. I, I'm almost, I'm almost positive we didn't see anything because yeah, right right before so right now they're they're cleaning the trucks. I yeah, like I said, I don't know if you guys are watching the DVD or the Blu-ray, but yeah, I do not remember those kind of quick cuts of the blood and like them turning her over with the eaten off face. The blood in the windshield that reminds me of Teddy. That's kind of that looks just like the blood from Teddy. It's kind of like that translucent, mm -hmm. almost jelly like blood. Yeah. Just kind of glows, um, in the in the the sunlight. We we were actually lucky. We didn't have to clean it off at all. We had a snowstorm, and there's kind of just yeah. Literally, we're like, how how are we gonna get this off? I mean, that was like froze on there. It was like yeah. I was really afraid that I was gonna end up staining, and literally like the snow just came off its sheets, and like the snow was like pink, and it just <laughs> it all came off. Like, I don't know how we lucked out like that. I yeah, that was probably one of our biggest, um accomplishments with that <laughs> shoe is that we didn't have to worry about that at all. So Jeff's got kind of some cool hair. He does. He's looking, you... he's looking good. I got a high forehead. You like high foreheads? What about Ryder Strong? How do you think he's looking? He's grown into a... A handsome young man. A handsome young man. I think Jeff's looking a little, little hunkier. So you're a big water drinker. You would probably get affected right away, wouldn't you? <laughs> you drink a lot likely. of water. I tr I don't drink pretty much any water at all. Like it's probably been days since I've actually had water. I just pretty much drink soda all day long. Jolt? No, I've been drinking. Um, Was there such thing as diet jolt? I don't know. I only drink <laughs> diet soda though. I've been drinking um, Dr Pepper ten a lot lately. I think I had like eight cans already today. That's all I drink is soda. The man's drink? Dr. It is Pepper the 10. man's drink. So you'd be like better between the two girls. Um, well, I'm always... I'll go for the brunette. I guess she's just kind of showing off the... Turn off the goods a little more, I think. Well, you get to see her breast with the entire film of not another teen movie. She's the foreign exchange student who is topless with the, literally the entire film. <laughs> so there you go. Um, I do like. I think that that was kind of probably one of the funniest touches of that movie is that I liked it. Um, so she doesn't speak English, and her the the subtitles for her go around her breasts. <laughs> Get that truck pretty clean. <clears throat> Are you good with working out of the hood? <clears throat> you better, better with the gun. Shooting from the hip. That was an awkward fade <clears throat> to black. Was that always there? I don't know. It's kind of weird. Has this ever happened to you? Why? Find a little... A little blood. Trying to wake somebody up and get a little action and oh, oh it's that time of the month. You get bloody fingers? <laughs> How many times has that happened to you? It's never happened to me. Thank God. It's like that thick, like <laughs> thick. Yeah. So what it has happened to you. I've seen it before. Why now are with you my looking at it. Now with my fingers. You like opened it up. No, it's been on the bed before. Oh my god! I guarantee you <laughs> that's happened to you. It's going down. So okay, this is getting kind of kind of hot, sexual. It's pulling up the up the shirt. You get that nice flat stomach. It's going downtown. She's liking it. She's moving around. He's kind of raping her right here. Uh, she's I, into it. She knows what's I, she's going She's not on. giving consent. She, oh, please. She knows what exactly She's what's sleeping. Happening. She's not sleeping. She didn't say yes. You've all woken somebody up doing this before. <laughs> <laughs> You've woken somebody up by fingering them? <laughs> You've been woken up by that? I've never. <laughs> 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 Ready? Here it comes. 
<clears throat> it is thick, though. So just kind of one of those scenes slash images that I've just kind of. So you've never seen that before. That's oh. that's all. <clears throat> you think still think she's hot? You could just fuck the wound. <laughs> just another hole. I guess you could technically. Poor girl. So how would you... One thing that I actually like about Cabin Fever is that I do think it plays really well as a comedy, but it also shows that when it comes to her own well-being, what we're do, willing to do to kind of fuck over others to just kind of save ourselves. Yeah, that's true. It's kind of, I know, survival. Like, if if I were at this cabin with you, um, I would throw you out in that shed if you had sores <laughs> in your legs. You, you wouldn't be able to. Yeah. I'd just rub my sores on you. Yuck. <laughs> and you'd be like, oh, it's thick. It got all over the bed. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they're checking themselves <clears throat> for um, sores. Uh, you checked an, another man for sores? Only you. <laughs> that was clean. No. <laughs> no. You just got a new story the other day. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what happened there? And you're like, oh, I've had that for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I don't remember how I got it. So you you've been to some cabin parties? Um, I sure have. Is this what it's like? Well, the girls aren't invited, right? <laughs> uh, nothing bros. Nothing but bros. A lot more wild. <laughs> a lot more nudity. A lot more nudity. <laughs> Just a lot more drinking. No checking for sores. No checking for sores. So it's open, open sore season. Uh, just alcohol just flowing, I'd imagine. Just flowing, yeah. So this is where you would put me? Yeah, you probably. Would, you would put me in a shed out in the... Well, I can't believe that she's just kind of voluntarily doing this. Well, I'd probably give you the, the choice if you wanted to stay in the shed or the, the truck. Gross truck? It's been cleaned. It's washed off at the hose. How do you feel about her just kind of walking in? Would you have liked to see her put up a fight? Like if this was a movie, say, Slash Studios was doing, in our script, would we have her maybe kicking and fussing? and In a weird way, her just kind of accepting this fate of her kind of saying like, oh, like, I'm not going to be in there if you guys don't want me in there. I think it almost, in a weird way, it kind of makes it more tragic, I think. Mm-hmm. What do you yeah. think? No, I, I agree. I think you, you feel for her a little more. You'd be kicking and screaming, though. Yeah, I would not want to go in there. Rumors. Would you be kicking and screaming more if I put you if I tried to put you in a shed or if I tried to stick you with a needle? Ooh, that's a good one. What if I st tried to stick you with a needle in a Inside shed? Inside a shed, huh? Yeah. If you're open so hard. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a needle person. <laughs> Ah, that'll be you. I'm probably right or strong. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's you in the shed. <laughs> uh -huh. That's probably how you got your open sore. <laughs> Is that too much shed time? Give me a plate of food. You'd be fine with that. Aunt. As long as you got Sarah, it's a lighter. <laughs> lock me, lock me in a shed. Give me some cigarettes and some coffee, and I'm probably gonna be fine. Hmm. So yeah, I mean, at this point, 
I mean, we don't really know what's causing this infection at the very end. You know, who's to say that they're not all infected? You know, I, I don't know if I would completely jump to the conclusion that, like, I think that I'd be worried that we all have it and we just haven't shown the symptoms yet. So I don't know if I jumped to the conclusion of just kind of making it for, I guess, the, you know, I think that is kind of drastic. I mean, kind of saying, oh, shit, I mean, she's already touched everything, you know, he's already fingered her. I think that I'd probably just make her stay in a room. I just say stay in there. Like we don't want you to contaminate anything else. I don't think I'd make her, you know, but at the same time, you know, it could be airborne. So there you go. He's getting a good look. See through the window here. What's going on here with this girl? She's relaxing in the bed. Has this ever happened to you? I guarantee you this is probably happened to you. <laughs> He's got a pretty good looking wife. Yeah, he does. She looks young. Does he he has actually a gun? He reminds me a little bit of a friend of your brother's. Which one? Alex. I think he looks a little bit like an older version really? of Alex. Okay. Can't see that at all. He's always got some hot chicks. It's true. Do you remember that kind of dark lipstick? Yeah, it was like the dark with like the... <laughs> the that black line like around the lips too? Yeah, it was very <laughs> like early 2000s. That that was very, very, very popular of doing the... It, it was kind of that extreme makeup. It only lasted for like a year or two, but... Yep, so everybody, you know, they went to have this good weekend, have a lot of fun. Everybody's just getting pissed off at everybody else now, which um, I got to say, I'd, I'd be right in the same boat with them. Would you be, what, how would you, I mean, if there is kind of one character that you think that you're most like personality-wise, who do you think you are? Do you think that you would be Paul, kind of the one I bringing be, it all together? I think Paul. But you're the one, ah, oh, ah, very, very smart. What? Could you be Marcy? I mean, you don't have the body for Marcy, but. I'd probably be Jeff. <laughs> No, I really think that I probably would be Jeff. I'd probably be Dennis's dad. No. No, I think I probably would be Jeff in the fact that I would be constantly covering my mouth. <laughs> what, do you think you're more like Jeff? <laughs> I could be Jeff. They do a good job of pulling off this, uh, the night cinematography, though. Cause, I mean, so many m movies that we've seen over the years, whether they're Big budget, low budget. Um, you can definitely tell in lots of them that they have a big spotlight pointing right at the actor. And this one, they do a good job. Yeah, it's either that or um, it's kind of that bluish tint where you can tell that it's day for night. Yuck. Which, I'm no, I, I, I'm not completely against day for night. I think it works for certain movies. Like recently, we just watched the original Last House and Lot which that was almost all day for night. And it kind of, for that movie, especially at the end, like it kind of gave it gave it like an ominous, like kind of almost hazy blue look. For a movie like this, it would not work. But I think day for night can work for the right movie. Okay. So they're finding her. They're going back to the... Um, the little shed and she... What I don't get is, like, if they were just going to leave her in there, like, they're touching her and stuff now, like, what was the point? Well, they just feel bad for her now. They've ever coughed up, coughed up blood? Mm. Nope. Oh, what that poor beetle? Well, he's going to get it. Maybe. That 
something a day. Like that? No. So I heard like this rumor that uh, Eli Roth, at, so they stayed, at, I'm sure not at this particular cabin. This cabin's very modeled off of Evil Dead, but probably a cabin around this. So they all stayed together while they were filming and to kind of slowly drive them insane on a constant loop. He had the Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen Holiday in the Sun would be playing. Really? Like, just for, I think, like 30 days straight. It was just a constant loop of this Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen movie. Hmm. Which, you know, if he really liked it, he just wanted to drive the actors crazy, what was going on. But that was a rumor that I had heard online. Hmm. Is that one of your favorites? I didn't see that one. If you could have been involved in this production, you could have saw it hundreds of times. I know. Would you get an after she shoot blood everywhere? Oh, I don't. I think I'd be walking or running. Yeah, you'd probably be the first infected. You drink a lot of water. <laughs> That's healthy. Not I here. Don't drink all that artificial sweeteners like you do. I love my artificial sweeteners. My Splenda. <laughs> Everything's bad for you. We're all gonna die. Not water. This water is. You never know what's really in water. Poop. There's probably some fecal matter. <laughs> a little fecal matter. It just adds protein. Put some hair in your. See, chest. that's all I needed. I just need my six pack of beer. You can drink all the water you want. I'll take the beer. Would you choose water over beer? No. Did you ever play the game that they're playing in this movie of the see how long you can go the see what's the longest you can go with only drinking um, hmm. alcoholic beverages? I haven't you? No, I've always been curious. I mean, it sounds like like oh, it's just beer. Like that's got to be pretty easy, but. I can honestly say in my entire life, I don't think I've gotten drunk just off of beer. Beer and liquor definitely together, but beer on its own, I don't think I have. What about you? No, you I, definitely have. On just beer? No, I mean, like, drinking just beer. Unless you count, do you count Four loco as beer? No, that's not beer. It's a malt beverage? It's a little different. Um, yeah, beer's one of those drinks where you just, you drink, just kind of relaxing, maybe just hanging out, have a couple beers. I love beer, don't get me wrong, but I mean, when you're going out and getting drunk and you want to get drunk, do you want to use something taking, beer tastes icky? What, when I was like four? <laughs> no, when you were like 21. I like crave beer now. <laughs> No, before you're like, yeah. No, I remember that. <laughs> you used to drink um, Blue UV and Lemonade. Okay, I, <laughs> I did not. That was you. And you get like, like 99 cent Blue UV drinks at <laughs> Shark's pool, pool Club. <laughs> no, that was like the shots. Oh, here we go. Um, Some more boobage. So you would have sex with her even though she's infected. Hands down. That you're gonna die. Her pants. So you just pour mouthwash on her. That would fix it. That'd burn. Like I'd imagine that'd burn. Like just in general. I mean that's a pretty tender area down there. <laughs> you think Listerine paid for product placement in this? <laughs> Possibly. I that's can't. A, that's a good shot to get some Listerine product placement in there. I've gotten sunburn before that felt like bad, though. Remember when you got sunburn in your shins? You like you couldn't walk. I could walk fine. Oh, you were complaining the entire week. It was like the second to the last day I was there. 
No, I can honestly say that the worst part of it was either taking a shower or the plane ride home, which is that, like, I was just stuck in a seat, and you don't have a lot of room to move anyway. It's so funny. And it's, like, rubbing up against the back the seat is, and it just burns, and it hurts, and, um, yeah, I broke a pair of flip-flops down there, and I had to... Hilarious. I had to use a pair of yours, and they... I'm used to the, the leather ones, and they were the plastic ones, and they dug right into my feet, which were already sunburned anyway. Do you like this Karate Kid? Yeah, Dennis is... We haven't really talked too much about Dennis. I mean, he's a really peculiar character. Like, I'd like to know where, where the mindset was when kind of writing this character. Like... I don't know. Where like, from the depths of the mind Dennis came from? I just have a feeling that Cabin Fever was one of those movies that, like, for Eli Roth, they just kind of all came together. That's like, you know what would be cool is if I had this in a movie, or maybe I should try this, and just kind of threw everything in the kitchen sink into a script. And most of the time those movies turn out to be overly self-indulgent or overly serious, but here almost every single one of those elements really, really works. Would you, what if, some little boy bit you and then you gave him a virus <laughs> and then his dad tried to shoot you well i i haven't had that happen but i'm sure you have that's never happened to me none of that's happened well to me. i'm sure the first half has no <laughs> maybe the dad okay. maybe the dad never found what's out what's funny is that so so he brings the box and he ends up the, mm. the kind of um overweight kind of guy and then you see in the box like they might possibly have a cure for this. And I think that so much of this movie is just kind of, like I said before, it's almost tragic of the just kind of bad circumstances and people make the wrong decisions. And I, I will tell you that the shaving scene, probably the most disturbing scene in the movie, um, Mm -hmm. If the audience that I had seen it with the theater hadn't already checked out by then, um, there were walkouts in the theater. I remember girls just saying, that's disgusting. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think any of those boys that thought, like, hey, I'm going to take my girlfriend to see this scary movie and she's going to get so scared and I'm going to get laid tonight. I don't think many of those boys got laid after seeing this movie with them. I do not think the girls were in the mood. Especially considering that this movie kind of shows the the dangers of unprotected sex. <laughs> so yeah, what's in the box? I don't know. It's a cure. And they're they're hogging it. No, he was gonna give it to him. That's why he was after him. <laughs> they're shooting him. He tried to get him to stop because he didn't want him to infect anyone else. So it's it's really funny. So we talked about the kind of this scene right here actually makes me more sick to my stomach than anything else in the movie. Mm -hmm. Um. So we got the the dead rotting corpse in the water, and then you find out that this is the water that everyone's been drinking, and just that dirty water with the flies, and then he falls right into it. Hmm. Oh. And his mouth is open. He gets out of his mouth. Like I think that is way more disturbing than the any anything else. The razor scene or the kind of the open mouth sword. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's just kind of one of those. Just would you be throwing dirty? Out? Oh, I would have puked already. I would have puked in the water. 
So you'd be covered with flies and puke and dead body. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It yeah, could do worse. That's about it. it this movie kind of does make you wonder, uh, you know, where are you getting your water supply hmm. from? Um, I, I already kind of find it queasy, the fact that this dirty water, even without this guy in it, that people are still, I don't care how many times it's been purified, there's still <laughs> something kind of disgusting about that. Mm-hmm. Do you ever um, mark your trees? <laughs> Not with blood. With your gore? <laughs> So, is any of these redneck your particular favorite? Oh, I don't know. I'm never... Oh, here we go. Here's the shaving scene. I, I don't still... know after all of this if shaving would be the first thing on my mind. She's just trying to look good. Wouldn't you, why wouldn't she do this before she had sex? She, she's in the mood. Does that put you in the mood? Sores in the back? Those legs do. What about the legs after the shaving? Uh, I'll tell you though, the one and only time I ever got a sunburn this time that he was talking about, um, this is what I was really afraid of. Shaving like, your legs? No, not shaving my legs, but literally the fact that it was just going to come off in clumps. Oh. It's funny because this is the scene that bothered everyone. For, ever, for whatever reason, it doesn't bother me that hmm. much. I, I can't believe it. It's, yeah, the shower part actually disturbs me the most. Um, but... The boobs? No, they don't even show the boobs. There's a little booby. Side boob. Feel good? Nobody cares about side boob. Oh, no, you're wrong. I know you, you have one other friend that also cares about <laughs> side boob, but... Do you like the red filter? Uh, like the was, dog's point of view? It was it's unique choice and I don't I don't mind it actually. I I actually like it a lot. So she gets eaten up by a dog. Is that how you'd want to go? No, that's a bad way to go. There are like pieces everywhere. Would you rather be the girl in the shed who gets her face bashed in with a shovel? Maybe it's just kind of a wham bam and you're you're done. The dog death. Ugh. I feel bad for this guy. I think that if I were gonna pick one of the ways to die, I would probably pick Jeff's because he's not infected at all and he just gets shot to death. I mean if I had to pick. See, that's you in the shed and you're just Dead. Look at little dog Olive. Do you think your dog would be eating the people? <laughs> Olive eats people all the time. She tries to eat my can... fingers all the time. She's never tried to eat me. <laughs> oh. So if you looked like that, and you're like that, would you just want me to bash your just, face on the shovel? Just take the shovel and go at it. I think I'd want to show you off to everyone. <laughs> I'd be like, come on, we're going back home. <laughs> You're going to be okay. <laughs> Do you think that'd be fun? <laughs> we'll show off your new look. I don't like that look. You got nice white teeth at least. You can show <laughs> yeah, them all off. Yeah, good looking teeth. Yeah, there was a bunch of cool posters for this. There was the the one that's probably the most known is the the trees with kind of the red background and the the trees with the cabin form a skull. Mm -hmm. um, there was also another poster that's actually like I like even better than that. I don't know if it was handmade. It might have been a Mondo poster, but it's actually the picture uh, of the back and then written in like the yep. the sore says cabin fever. That yeah. one's actually my favorite. Yeah, that's a really really cool one. It's the box. So were these kind of like the guys that you went to the cabin with? Maybe oh, maybe the guy in the far right. Far right's the closest. You're correct. 
And you're more like the the Henley guy. <laughs> it's a good looking Henley. Really cool setting too. Mm -hmm. It's like just this cabin, and it's just kind of surrounded by, I don't know, just <clears throat> millions of leaves and trees. It just it's just in a really really cool place. Do you know where this was filmed, Kevin? I oh. <laughs> poor Dennis is left without dad. <laughs> Don't you feel bad for Dennis? This movie was shot in North Carolina. Hmm. The cabin exteriors were all shot in North Carolina. Hmm. The underage drinking party scene was shot in LA. Okay. So that's going to be coming up in a little bit. Um, yeah, and the Bowling Alley Massacre was also shot in LA. But it's, it looks like, for the most part, everything else was shot in um, in and around Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Hmm. And I, do, I can definitely see that. This definitely does have a kind of an eastern coast. I guess if I were to guess, I would have thought maybe like Connecticut or... Yeah, I was going to say um, northeast. Yep. So what would you do if you were infected? Would you just want somebody to kill you? Would you want to wait it out? See, I just wait it out. You could I not could, wait it I out. I could um, come back from it. I have a very strong immune system. You're always sick. <laughs> very strong metabolism. I, I honestly don't know what I would do. Um, it'd be I'd probably just curl up in a ball. No, I definitely think that I'd be the hero. That I'd be the one figuring out what's causing this. I would definitely go for safety, bring help. <laughs> but what's interesting about this is that it, you know, and this is kind of the scary thing is that if it if it is this contained. And they think that it's only these couple of people. I mean, if you got help, especially the government, I mean, they kind of bring this in more with number two, is there's a good chance that they're going to quarantine you know, and they're going to kill you themselves because mm. they don't want you to spread it. Which, so, I mean, I think that kind of brings up that, um, yeah, there really is no help. You're just screwed. Yeah, either way you're going to die. Whether the illness, if you ask somebody else to kill you, if you kill yourself, yeah. So don't drink the water. The moral of the story. Water's bad for you. How much water do you think you drink a day? What's that? How much water do you think you drink a day? Do you drink the recommended eight to ten glasses? That is so much water. Who drinks that? That is a lot of water. This was the scene. I remember people were groaning in the theater. You know, this is like, ugh, duh. They didn't like this part? No, they hated it. And then, like, I think that people were just getting more and more offended and more and more aggravated and more and more pissed off. Like, you could definitely tell... As we walked out of the theater, there was kind of this air of contention that the people who had sat through this movie, it was not what they were expecting. You know, to say it, like, I do think that Lionsgate, you know, they kind of advertise this, this is the scariest movie you're going to see all year. I, you know, and it's hard to, it's hard to market a horror comedy. And... You know, if they were kind of going in expecting kind of this scary, less campy version, 
I can see why they would have been disappointed. Hmm. Um, how was this compared to what you thought you were going into? I had no idea. I'd only seen one trailer. So this is you trying to get with Linda Yeah, girls. there you go. Seems kind of like a lame party, though. Not a whole lot going on here. Do you have any friends that you could see going to a party <laughs> like this? I think we all do. Look at his hair. I remember when that kind of hair was popular. What do do guys still highlight their hair? I don't think so. I think that's a thing in the past. Like frosted tips. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get a tow truck to get that fucking tow truck. <laughs> hey, you should frost your tips. You should, you should get a mustache like the deputy. I had one not too long ago. Hmm. How did he get this job? You think he was just a relative of somebody? I was going to say, he had to have known somebody. Or been somebody's son. The walkie-talkie dude. I love the harmonica. <laughs> you ever played a harmonica? Yeah. Who didn't play with a harmonica when they were little? I loved how that harmonica looked in his throat. It's so disturbing. Hmm. just loves parties so much. I love when he's just sitting there and he's like, no, I haven't found the party yet. Hmm. So you get one last little glimpse of the walkie-talkie. I meant the um, harmonica guy. Yeah. Would that be you? No, I don't want to be that guy either. <laughs> so yeah, this is one of those few horror movies where we don't actually see it, but literally every single person dies mm -hmm. and I love it in the sequel that he is um, uh, first build credit and he's literally dead before the title screen mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's I think he's maybe on screen for less probably less than a minute mm -hmm. it, it's a really cool opening it brings you right in yeah, he gets hit by a school bus. And then Deputy Winston hmm. checks out the... You'd be in the wheelchair, Ugh. seeing what's going on, and then... Just turn the lights over. So how do you feel about this stuff? Like, the stuff in the hospital is kind of really trippy. You get the room with the, the mm -hmm. bunny. Do you feel like this is just stuff that's, like going on in his mind because this virus is kind of taking over his body. Yeah, I, I, that's what I kind of had to assume yourself. Yeah, I've always thought that too. I mean, you know, it, it is just, you know, it just gets to the point where it just gets really, really weird. So yeah, it makes you really wonder what's, what's actually happening and what. Mm -hmm. There's some sores. Check out the hair. What's that? 
So what would you think? What do you think the lesson is behind this movie? Don't go camping. Don't drink the water. <laughs> it's both. Both, yeah. Choose your friends wisely. Don't drink well water. Yeah. <laughs> you ever drink in well water? Yeah, that's all my own parents have at their place. Did you like have to go to the well out in your backyard, put like the bucket down? No, like, it's, wind it up. It's connected to their actual water line. It just comes from the, and they have a filter. Have you felt? Have you fallen down the well? No, I've never fallen. I don't think I've ever you seen. You get stuck in a well. Have you ever actually seen like a real well, like a real working well, like no. with the bucket that you'd put down with the rope? I, I don't even know how that works. Like, how does the bucket, like, go in the water? You know what I mean? Like, how does it... It would have to, like, go to the side. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? Like, that's a tip over to get the water and then go back up. Yeah, I don't understand how the rope makes it do that. I guess it's just... That was many ge different generations before. Do you know how that works? Um, I think the current just tips it over. But what about when you... So every single time, you gotta get a bucket? You don't, you don't get a new bucket. The bucket's attached to the rope. Yeah, but I don't understand what makes it turn over. <laughs> the current. It's flowing water. In I the well? I think it's, isn't it like an underwater stream? I don't like, really know how it I don't works, know how honestly. you find the water. Like, how would you know where to start digging? Yeah, where, where would you know where to put a well? I thought it was just what from the rain. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what maybe. gets with the water in the bucket. What'd you do for like if you live in like Arizona? It'd be so dry. Yeah, you would. You have to I don't know what you do. Drink I think there's like water and cactus. Like chop a cactus up and and it's like cucumber. <laughs> what does the inside of a cactus look like? Green? Is it green? Is it like cucumber? I think so. Like it said that feeling, like that. I've never had it. They do make like cooked cactus. Like cactus bread. I'd like to try it just to say I did. Have you had fried zucchini? No, but I love fried pickles. Fried pickles are good. Fried zucchini is excellent. Well, rhubarb rhubarb pie personal favorite rhubarb crisp is my favorite so but good. really like anything with rhubarb you can't go wrong mm -hmm. and we live in wisconsin like you just find that crap by the barrels like it seems like everyone's just like a, like if you live like on any kind of farm they're just trying to get rid of their hmm. rhubarb like the rhubarb lady <laughs> that was stealing yes, rhubarb that's right <laughs> alley property bitch <laughs> Where's your fucking I, sign? I just bought it out the other day. <laughs> and then Andy Richter and Conan did a little reenact. <laughs> right. Which is pretty good. They were stolen rhubarb. I think that lady did have a good point, though. It, that, didn't, that was outside of the fence. Like, I think that that's fair game. It's still connected to something that's inside the fence, though. Would you say something to her if you lived in that house? She was pretty scary. <laughs> I, maybe I'd call she somebody had her to cart. come do it. Yeah, she did have the cart. <laughs> but yeah, I don't... I honestly think that if it's in that alley, like it's outside of the if fence... If it's growing in the alley, it's coming through the fence, though. I would say whatever coming through the fence would be fine. I once... There was an orange tree hanging over a fence, and I grabbed an orange, and I got yelled at. The guy who owned the property saw me and he yelled at me. What did he say? He, I can't remember his exact words, but he was yelling at me because he said that was his orange and I was not allowed to take it. For an orange? And one I, orange? I took it and I kept walking and he kept yelling. I'll did you, never, were you scared? Did you start running? It was, um, I may have picked up a little speed, had a brisk walk. What if he started throwing oranges at you? Well, he wouldn't because the, the, those were his prized oranges. Were they, was it good? I, I ate it, so. Did you tell your mom about that? She was there. Your mom was fine with you taking it? Yeah, she 
It was it was alley property. What your mom? Did your mom say anything to him? No, we all just kept walking. <laughs> I don't believe this at all. It's true. It was it was in New Zealand. Does that make it more believable? Okay, so it wasn't like a neighbor. No. Okay, that I don't know if it makes it more believable, but it makes it at least <laughs> more probable. Because I could see your mom, like, if it was, like, a neighbor's, like, tree. Like, she's not going to want to look bad in front of the neighbors. She'd be like, Stephen, you get that apple back if you say you're sorry. <laughs> oh, could you so What do you think that? about this ending here? Like, just throwing the, the bodies and light them on fire. You know what that would smell like? It smell terrible. They just light the house on fire. I don't even know what they're shooting at here. No, they just don't want to go down there. So yeah, we go from kind of this. When are they going to shoot Dennis? I don't <laughs> think ever. So we go for this track from this. That is gross. I don't care if there's dead body in that anyway. Those kids making lemonade out of that river water is Yuck. disgusting. I would not buy that. You probably would if you were really thirsty. But yeah, so it goes from this like very tragic ending of this infected water and this whole town that's just going to die to kind of this upbeat kind of country hillbilly folk song with our old man shopkeeper. And I, like I said, I don't know if the audience that I saw this with had any idea of what they were watching. I think this scene was really kind of the scene that people were just, well, not only this, but the his friends that come up. Yep, that's funny. Um, um, we got a sign here that says hoop cheese. And we're from Wisconsin, so I feel like I should know everything about cheese. What on earth is hoop cheese? Have you ever heard of that? Maybe like shaped like rings? I don't know. Hoop cheese. Interesting. You would drink hey, that. Sure, would you like some brown lemonade? You'd probably drink it. Really and where did come? these people come from? Like in the middle of the woods? They're passing through. They're heading heading to Atlanta. To pick up their rifle? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I think this is funny. I think it's amusing. I can understand how crazy Critics like Roger Ebert found this to be distasteful and offensive. Why was he offended by it? Because of Oprah? Because he thought this was all just black stereotypes. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder when this premiered in Toronto, the film festival there, like... I wonder what they thought with all these like major studios just watching this movie for the first time. Like, it's very weird. It's very bizarre. It's kind of got its own attitude, its own sensibility. Although it is, I think, very influenced by movies like Evil Dead and maybe even stuff like Friday the Thirteenth. But you know, I I am kind of glad the fact that it did end up going with Lionsgate because. Who knows if a studio like Universal or Paramount or any of them had picked it up, how much of this might have changed from the original version to the final one. You know, would they have said, you know, this ending's offensive, audiences aren't going to like it? Would they have wanted a more serious tone? So, yeah, I am glad that kind of Lionsgate decided to take a chance with this, and I think that it does work. Mm-hmm. No, I hear you. And um, yeah, I'm glad that... David Kaufberg, Bird? David Kaufberg. Bird. Bird. That's Eli Roth. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, playing Justin Grimm. Hmm. He used a fake name. I I do like the credits here where they kind of like break it up into mm -hmm. different scenes right around Winston's underage booze party. Um, our main cast was labeled as... The kids, so Sir Chug a lot, Sir Chug a lot. Yeah, I definitely think that's cool. They got a great, great backdrop here to the, to the end with all the the townsfolk coming up and getting some lemonade. And Happy bald guy Adam Roth. There 
There you go. <laughs> so yeah, that was our commentary for the director's cut of Cabin Fever. We hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm not 100% sure on the next commentary that we're going to be doing, but I'm sure it'll be another fun horror movie. So thanks for watching some Cabin Fever with us, and we will be back next time with some more horror goodness for you guys. Very cool. So, yeah, until next time, thank you guys for watching. And check us out on uh, Facebook and Twitter, Tumblr, slash studios.com. Let, let, let us know what films you want us to, mm -hmm. to, um, to tackle next. So, until next time, guys, have a horror-filled week. Thank you.